Hoi lads, Sam here, with another episode in How To PvP in Dark Souls 3. In this one, I'm going to be focusing on some general PvP advice that I've been having a quandary on how to describe to people for some time. Hopefully I do it justice. I want to do a somewhat quick lesson in predictability, and I want to talk about getting better at the game, that the mindset that you need for that, as well as avoiding salt at any point during your PvP, or I suppose playing other games as well. Starting off talking about predictability. The footage I'm showing you is a bit older. I don't have the footage before it, but I know I saved this one specifically because this was a fight against somebody who is at a more moderate PvP skill level. Uh, so I had gotten a setup parry on him earlier, but then he had avoided it a couple times after I, I went for it then. So in my head, I know that he's probably not going to make the same mistake again. And it's kind of a game of predicting what he's going to do. I missed a couple stu um, uh, stun lock parries where they attack out of stun lock with him earlier. And then I didn't do it a couple times, and I threw one out just uh, at the beginning of this clip that you saw and was able to get him there. So there's, you don't want to just completely abandon things. You have to kind of predict how your opponent is going to work, uh, especially somebody who doesn't fall into the same patterns. And sometimes you'll get the right read and the right prediction, and sometimes you won't. But depending on how the person is playing, you can make that prediction more accurate. I feel like I made that sound more complicated than it is. What I mean to say is, you can't always count on somebody falling for a third hit parry or a setup parry. However, if somebody dodges those, or they do anything in general that works in PvP, you can bet on that they're going to return to the thing that worked uh, sooner rather than later. So if somebody dodges your setup parry and runs for a backstab, Maybe you pretend you're going for setup parry and you hit them. And maybe you do that a second time. And maybe the third time you actually go for the setup parry because they attack instead. So there's kind of this game of predictability and deciding what your opponent is more likely to do. Getting those reads is how you're going to win fights against good players. Good spacing alone against good players is not going to be enough. If you've watched anybody who's above that moderate skill level area, once in a while they'll lose to somebody whose space is good, myself included. But most of the time you're going to beat somebody who all they know how to do is space and not actually predict what you're doing. As we're watching the same footage here, I'm going to look like I lose this guy a bit. I make some misreads, some bad predictions, or he changes up his behavior uh, based upon what I'm doing because I was able to punish him a few times and he's more cautious. I don't want to climb too far down or up the controversial ladder, but I know I'm Estes canceling a lot. It's something I picked up from fighting at Pontiff. It's something I really think I should break for invading like I am here at Soul Level 60. Probably not against this guy because Earlier he had phantoms. He's got Max, Estus, and Siegbrews and whatnot, so I don't really feel bad for him. But I do feel that I might be giving myself too much leverage when fighting somebody at soul level 60 or soul level 40, throwing in Estus canceling on, on top of the whole mix. Finally, though, later into this fight, with a little bit of mixing up, I do a quick soft swap to get my parry shield in my left hand and do a setup parry against this man. And then even though I just missed a parry out of stun lock, I'm thinking he's going to go for it and I go ahead and throw out the parry after stun lock and I'm rewarded with the parry. I did have some more parry spam in this than I normally would, but that doesn't negate the fact that I'm trying to predict what he's doing and I assume he's doing the same to me because he was changing up his behavior. And you have to keep on top of that. You have to actually study your opponent. One of the best things you can do is if you do record your footage, look at yourself, look at your opponent. I picked this up from I Am Amish in one of his latest videos. Look at yourself and look at your opponent. Look what went right. 
look what went wrong. What would you have done differently that your opponent did? Would what you have done work better or worse? Moving on to getting better at the game and avoiding salt as you do so. When you are trying to improve your skills at the game, from the time where you go for your first rolling backstab to going into hard swapping out weapons, rings, entire armor sets, what have you, you are faced with two decisions. Either you can focus on what you want to improve and what it will yield you if you work on it and try to better yourself, or you can decide that you're satisfied with the skill level that you're at or that the skill that you're trying to acquire is ultimately not worthwhile. And that doesn't mean that the latter is always the wrong option. But if you aren't in the mindset that you want to get better and you're willing to put in the time and effort to learn those new skills, then you simply won't. It's not going to come to you magically. There's some things you get with experience, like knowing weapons and movesets and whatnot, but when it comes to more complicated things, like hard swapping or moveset swaps or, uh, or forward roll punishes, rolling backstabs, that sort of stuff comes when you work at it, not just because you've played the game for some time. Talking about avoiding the salt now, there's a lot of things that can upset you in Dark Souls, whether it just be plainly dying, uh, other people using combinations of weapons that are difficult to deal with, like uh, four-pronged plow, Gundir's halberd, maybe some sort of poise weapon or or even a sorcerer. That can be hard to deal with when you're invading or, or whatnot. Maybe it's the glitches that get to you, Estus cancel. I know Estus refill, that can even get on my nerves, admittingly. I almost have to pick on somebody when talking about this, so I am going to pick on G9 quite a bit. And truth be told, G9's personality really conflicts with mine. And that comes from it with, like, I've watched him for several hours, and he's a fantastic player. I cannot discount that. However, when he loses, he is not having fun. And I want to remind people that you are playing a game, and I hope you have fun. It's okay to get a little bit upset sometimes, but for example, I've killed G9 four times, and the latter two times, he did not stop complaining about it for 30 minutes, because I was part of a gank in those two times as a sorcerer, and we were working together. However, seeing him complain for so long, I got tipped by another friend of mine that um, he had uh, been complaining about us in his stream, which I knew he invaded, unless it was a really good, uh, a really good G9 doppelganger, but I was pretty sure it was actually him. And he still was complaining 30 minutes later after each time we killed him that night. And just, it wasn't like we were doing anything crazy. I was a sorcerer sticking close to one of my teammates at all times. G9 didn't want to fight all three of us at the same time, so he would back off and try to split us up. That's what he does. That's a strategy. It's a strategy I use often as an invader. But when there would be two of us, he would engage a lot of the time. And I'm running the Aquamarine Dagger, and I'd have a um, teammate running sort of more of a poise weapon, like a Claymore, or I believe he was using, one of them was using a Split Leaf. It's just, we're working together, we're sticking together, we're doing what gankers should do. Not doing anything out of the playbook. G9 will do anything to win. He'll do Estus Cancel, which I do too. He'll do Estus Refill. He'll sit in a world uh, forever. He'll kill his teammates to get Estus. I mean, that's a legitimate strategy, but if he thinks his teammate isn't good enough, he'll just kill them. And he started retaliating against his teammates because he didn't think they were good enough in the invasion he was in with us. I think that that play style is awful. That attitude is awful, I should say. I would encourage people to avoid the salt. 
You can be as good of a player as G9. You can even use all the glitches if you want to. But I see a lot of hypocrisy from G9, where he says the things we're doing are unfair, like me sticking close to my friend, having 40 attunement, and using great soul arrow and great heavy soul arrow, and hitting him with the dagger whenever he tries to come in and punish. That to him is unfair, but Estus cancel and Estus refill and all the glitches, moveset swaps, all of that are not. I don't think that's right. I think that's just being salty. I would encourage everybody to avoid that sort of attitude. And it's fine that G9 has an audience. I'm not fond of him. It doesn't mean that I, I wish he lost his audience and had a horrible life. It just means that I'm not fond of his attitude. I have to respect the things he's contributed to the community and his skill, but I don't respect his attitude. Well, I broke my 10 minute rule for this video. I'll try to keep any future videos under 10 minutes, but I do think I'm going to do a video in my It's a Long Way to Get Good series about how to be a sorcerer, since I don't think that applies towards most of PvP, but I want to give some good tips as to how to be a sorcerer. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, sorry I picked so much on G9 and had fun a little bit rubbing salt in back at him, but in conclusion, have that mindset to get better. If you do want to get better, work at it, but you can still avoid the salt. Have fun. Keep playing Dark Souls 3, guys.